Hello everybody, it's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your April 2016 episode of 10 for 12, and I think we may have finally done it. I think we have the perfect spot. It took me a little bit of time, but I appreciate the fact that it is what it is. Today I'm using natural lighting, but there are lights in this room for night shots, so I think... Now that I've officially been able to showcase my collections and actually give you guys a great angle, I'm happy to say that this is going to be the designated spot for my future videos. So today I am doing a 10 for 12. Once again, it is going to be a collaboration with three YouTubers that are very good friends of mine. Two of them actually have a show together. It is Amy and Laura over at Two Paper Girls. And the other one is a new YouTuber who happens to be from the exact same state that I live in, which is New York. Her name on her channel is Book of Flicks Taylor. And the reason why I am doing this collaboration with these three wonderful ladies is because while they are booktubers, they may not showcase it as much, but they are just as passionate about film. As a matter of fact, Amy and Laura over at Two Paper Girls happen to do book to film adaptation videos and show what's good as well as criticize. So that's the topic that we are going to be discussing today. Our top 10 favorite book to film transitions. They don't necessarily have to be the best, but it is always really cool to see when something like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, or even a Disney movie like Cinderella is chosen to go from pages of a book to visions on a movie screen, will they get it right? So I'm very excited to see what Two Paper Girls and Book of Flicks Taylor will choose, because as always, this is going to be a blind box. And yes, just before I begin, there is always going to come a day once a year where I do, in fact, have a horrible day where my hair is completely out of control and I wear my patented super bad beanie. So here we go. Number 10 is the DreamWorks animated films of How to Train Your Dragon. Yes, they are based on books, and I haven't read these books, but all I know is that these are very popular books, and the movies are just amazing. The animation, the story, the characters, everything about the first two films, soon to be a third one coming down the pike, they just work. So if there are any people out there watching that actually have read these books, I am very curious to know what you think of them. The next one for me is The Wolf of Wall Street, based on the story of Jordan Belfort. I haven't read the book, but I actually happen to know someone whose father does know these people personally, and even refused to join them when they were building Stratton Oakmont. But my goodness, the Martin Scorsese film is just so crazy and over-the-top fun. And that is what makes Scorsese one of the greatest directors out there. He really did a great job, and Leonardo DiCaprio's performance, alongside all the other people in this movie like Jonah Hill and Margot Robbie, he just rocked this. I did not expect him to go beyond that performance, but then we have The Revenant, and we all know what happened there. Number eight is Jurassic Park. I actually did read the Michael Crichton novel when I was very young. A matter of fact, I read it after I saw the film that Steven Spielberg directed. It's very different from the film, but for the mass fan appeal and everything that they did to make this movie possible, especially with the breakthroughs that they did in the computer graphics department with the dinosaurs, it was great, and it became a staple for many as far as film fans go. Now, granted, some of the sequels didn't work, but Jurassic World did and was very successful, and I'm actually sort of excited for the fact that there is another Jurassic World on the way, but the Jurassic Park film, the first one, the Steven Spielberg classic, a very good transition from book to film. Now, number seven on my list is a very interesting one that could be very much debated upon, and that, of course, is the Hunger Games series, of course, based on the books by Suzanne Collins. Of course, it's because of the fact that not that many people really enjoyed how the book ended, and I know that that's a solid fact because I've met so many people that really didn't appreciate how the books ended. But they won't deny the fact, and myself included, that those books were very good, great reads, and very powerful. The movies didn't disappoint at all, and the reason why is because of the fact that they just got the story very well adapted, and not just that, they just found the perfect actors to 
take the roles of these characters that we read in the pages of the book. Jennifer Lawrence was still coming into her own, but when you thought of names like Woody Harrelson, or Stanley Tucci, or Elizabeth Banks, or heck, even Lenny Kravitz, when you saw them bring these characters to life, you were just awestruck by the beauty of these characters and the incredible performances that each and every one of them gave. I also will say that the ending in Mockingjay Part 2 definitely left me with a better feeling as opposed to how I felt when I read Mockingjay the book. So as far as I'm concerned, The Hunger Games from book to film, one of the better adaptions out there even though the books were a little bit wrapped in controversy. Number six is Gone with the Wind. Another book I haven't read, but I know so many people love that book, and this movie is a classic. It set the standard for the epic film. I finally saw it for the first time last year. As a matter of fact, I will post my review for that movie in the box below, and it really is one of those amazing movies that still holds itself up amongst all the other movies out there to this day. Number five is a series of books. Series are also included as well as standalones, and that, of course, is the Ian Fleming James Bond series. Now, yes, they're not always exactly like they are in the books, but the James Bond films are pop culture classics. So many great stories, so many great characters, so many great songs came because of these wonderful action-packed spy movies from the 1960s all the way to today. Number four is the Mario Puzo novel, The Godfather, that became one of the greatest films of all time directed by Francis Ford Coppola. My fiancé did read the book, but I have not. But I know so many people that actually did like the book, and the movie is one of the greatest films. Like I said in my previous 10 for 12 in regards to sequels that surpassed the originals, how many films win Best Picture and have their sequels do so as well? Even if you haven't read the book, I'm pretty sure that if you have seen The Godfather, it is probably one of the greatest movies you have ever seen. Number three is another mod movie. It actually is another Martin Scorsese movie, and it is Goodfellas. And yet, strangely, it's another book that I haven't read. So I do plan to read all of these books at one point in time or another. But Goodfellas, to me, is one of the greatest Martin Scorsese films ever made. It's one of the greatest movies ever made, period. Number two is the Harry Potter novels, which I actually have read. I've read all seven of them, and I own all of them, and I own all eight movies, and I am now building my collection for the illustrated editions, which are just breathtaking. Yes, there are a couple of things that were not included in the films, but the actors that they got, the way that they really tried to keep it as close to the story as they possibly could, they just did a phenomenal job, and I love those books and those movies, respectively. And of course, my number one is the J.R.R. Tolkien novels of Lord of the Rings, as well as the films directed by Peter Jackson. These three films not including the Hobbit film. I do love the Hobbit book, and I do enjoy the movies as well. But The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King are just some of the most beautifully crafted films ever. I think they are the greatest films ever made. Sure, there are some that are movies out there that are more enjoyable, but from a filmmaking's perspective, everything from the acting, to the set decorations, to the special effects, to the costumes, to the score, everything in those three films just work. And if you haven't seen these movies, you must. Go see the extended editions, for crying out loud, because they just put so much more into those films from a music, character development perspective, and story perspective. They are three of the greatest films ever made. And when Return of the King became the first science fiction fantasy film to win Best Picture, that's all you have to know. That's just how good they are. And that is my list of ten great book-to-film transitions. I am sure there are so many others out there that I missed, but I really had to think hard at to what were my 10 personal favorites, and these are them. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Two Paper Girls and seeing what Book of Flicks Taylor has chosen in regards to the 10 great book-to-film transitions, and I will see you guys in the next 10 for 12 in May, and actions speak louder than words.